Live from the Balls Visual Radio Studios, this is the Blades on Ball Show. And now, here's your host, the voice of South African rugby himself, Hugh Bladen. Hugh, it's over to you. We're played in this Monday morning by Void Shadows. Um, it was South African band from the 80s. And uh, welcome to Blades on Balls on this Monday morning. Do we... I've missed one or two Mondays because I've had to be, well, last week, last Monday, I was down in Velkom with uh, Carlos Spencer and Nas Buerta and Johnny Berger and Kevin Rabi, who played number eight for Northern Free State. Johnny Berger played full back for Northern Free State. Maybe some of you remember those dudes. Oh, they're strong boys. And uh, we were at the Fork School in, in Velkom. And Sydney's just joined me. He's just in time. <laughs> As usual. Just in time, Sydney. Thank you. You can tweet us on Bulls Radio. Radio. Is that it? That's just it. Bulls Radio. B A double L Z Radio. Now, what's happened to the Sharks? Those we'll talk about. The, we'll talk about the Sharks because I flew back from well, I on on. Saturday after the game at King's Park, we went to a little bear. <laughs> <laughs> Can you spell it? As uh, <laughs> Carlos Spencer would call it, a bear. And we uh, watched the Bulls thump the, the, the Kings. The Kings did very well, but at the end of the day, 34 0, you go, oh, wow, here comes Maz with some booze. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, 34, what was it, 34 nil, was it, or 37 nil? 30, 32 nil, I think. Have you got the results? Um, yeah, I have got them here. Sydney, he's so efficient on his iPad. Well, I'll keep Morning, up with technology. Sydney. Hello, Blazy, how are you doing? I'm good, good. But the we, Bulls were great. You're talking about the Bulls. I thought they were incredible, though, the way they Yeah, played. I told you about Jan Safentain. Yes, long Man of the ago. match performance. Mm, but oh, the, I hope that... I hope that's where I'll give you 10 out of 10, Hubie, and I've told you a million times, you've got a gift. You pick these players, and then I can recall, even at Craven Week, where you go and you actually commentate, and you'll tell me, well, this boy's going to be a springbok, that one's going to be a springbok, and you, you're never wrong. No, I am wrong. I am wrong. I picked Roland Bernard once, and Roland Bernard... I uh, recall that, but well, he he's, now, he's now playing in France, but he got into the SA school sc side. Yeah, and captain. I'm not... Of, uh, well, it, well, one of the things there's Maz, hi Maz one of the things about uh, going to the Craven Week you know, I mean, it, it's more difficult commentating a Craven Week game than it is commentating like, well, particularly the Sharks against the Cheetahs, because you know all those players, whereas you go to Craven okay. Week you get a team sheet 10 minutes before the game, and you don't know one single one of the 46 players so can you explain how you how you do it i don't know I, well, what i do is I, we get the team sheet and then i block them off i block off the full back and the centers and the wings and the and the number you know the loose forwards and that sort of thing and then when at, let's say northern free state are playing against and those are the really difficult ones <coughs> when northern free state play against border country border country districts mm. That's difficult, and the border country districts have got uh, numbers that you can't see. I don't know how you do it. No, and um, so, you know, I, t I anticipate quite a lot, and I run my fingers down the, uh, the players, sort of down the list of players, if the locks are sort of going to get the ball. If it's a kickoff, I'll, I'll just check who the locks are, and the number eight particularly. Mm -hmm. And when the ball's in the air, you look down to see who's getting the ball. Well, I'll give you 10 out of it's 10. I really do, because I must just tell the people out there, when Huey did his first commentary, he invited me to do comments, which I refused <laughs> straight away, because I could never have done it. Uh, but uh, I admire you for the way you do the commentaries, Huey, and re brilliant. And you never miss a name. It's incredible. No, I do. I, you know, one makes mistakes. I mean, well, you can't only go. Human. Joel made a mistake on Saturday. He called Kutsia Snayman or something. <laughs> But yeah. uh, so you know, I mean, look, those things were not infallible, and those things happen. And uh, I'm, uh, now my question for you today is that Joe Roth and Rico, I think it's Rico Gear, 
holds a record for the most number of super tries in a season, 15. Which South African has scored the most tries in a season? That's my question for today. To me or to no, the people? To, the, <laughs> okay. to our viewers. Okay, just checking. Listeners, viewers. Super rugby season. Morning, Mr. Bladen. Oh, great to have you back. That's from Otto Sin Simon. Thank you, Otto. Bye, thank you. I'm your Twitter. Tweet. <laughs> your tweet. <laughs> <laughs> Ons wat deel jylle ondersteuning, het is baie lekker gewees. Nou, uh, the, what we will, the Bulls are good. Stormers had a rest. I can never quite understand how Sanzar have worked out the system is when you have a bye, you get four, you points. Get four points. No. It's no. very confusing. And, you know, that frankly, the top side, if you look at the overall log, the Bulls are top of the South African franchise, but overall... They, where would they lie? Sydney's got them here. Yeah, who, who are you talking about, no, please? But, uh, I'm the saying Bulls the, are top. Oh, no, the overall list. Here it is. Where would the Bulls lie? They are um, they are lying third with 28. No, they wouldn't. They wouldn't. They would be down in, in here overall. with 28 points. Yeah, they'd be, here they are. they'd be down in sixth. The Bulls on the oh, combined third. log are third. Third. No, 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 no. Yes. Yes. If you look at the number of points, they're third because they're top of the South African Conference. Yes. Look at in your right-hand column, 28 points. Now move it down below 30. They would be sixth on the list. Yes, but they're not. They're third. No, I'm saying if it were an over... Oh, you <laughs> Simon, I, I've got it here as third. Yeah, huh? Oaks is driving me insane. <laughs> if it were an overall log, okay, yes. like the British Premiership, Okay, we, the Bulls would be lying sixth on the log, That's which is not, um, what my point is, it's not great, is it? But it doesn't make sense, I agree with you, because if you look at no, the Chiefs are 35. No, you see they're 28 because they are into the playoffs. That's the playoffs, because they're, oh, top, they're top of the South of African the, Conference. Ah, <laughs> Simon. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm getting there also. It's Monday morning. <laughs> Monday morning. Monday morning. You know, the South African Barbarians are going over to play uh, the Saracens, which is nice. I was sat on the Ooh. South African Barbarians uh, fix, uh, no, uh, selection panel. They, they don't call it a selection panel. They call it the Invitation Committee. Yes. Yeah. The Invitation well, Chick Committee. Chick Anderson got you involved in all that. Chick in, what was my first administrative job in yeah. rugby was... Uh, was with the Quachas. Well, that's it. I was just going to say Quachas, SA Barbarians. That's one sort of Well, it became the Quachas Barbarians, but now they've, they've actually separated the Quachas players, the Quachas, and SA Barbarians players, yeah. SA Barbarians. And they're playing in a, in a uh, exhibition game uh, against Saracens. You know, well, South Afri Saracens have a very strong South African, South African mm -hmm. connection. Cause well, it took in a war. We're no, no, no. They're playing uh, up Sydney. I don't know on the Saracens ground, mm. and uh, Nick Mallett's the coach. And I had lunch with Nick Mallett a couple of weeks ago. Very interesting to chat to him about uh, the handling of you know not only the players, the handling of uh, your attack coach and your defence coach and your your uh, kicking coach and your. You know, he's all these coaches, that, and he's, he sort of said, you know, to try and coordinate all these coaches is not the easiest job in the world. And what you do... What is, is his job? I mean, is he affiliated to the SA Rugby, or is he employed no, by... No, sorry. no, no, he's no. not. No, he's not. Oh. He's, doing, uh, he's doing commentary, you know, on the desk, and, and he's great. I hey? admire his knowledge, yeah. yes, I really do. He's great. Um... But he was saying, you know, that the attack coach would get the, the hell in because the defence coach had had 10 minutes longer with the players than the attack coach. And then the attack coach would say, no, you can't do that because, you know, then your defence, your... Oh. He said it was very difficult. Defence coach mm. doesn't want them to do this on attack because then they won't be lined up on, uh, aligned on defence. I mean, it's absolutely crazy. Yeah, you results? Know, what uh, are the results? Well, I want to I know, don't. I want you to tweet me, guys, and tell me who of you has predicted 75% correct this year. Because predictions have been very, very difficult. Huh? These are the results. No, we have the results coming up now, but, you know, I can't. Uh, I think Simon's bringing them up there. There you go. There we go, Hugh. 
Is the writing too small for you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, no, the screen is too far away. <laughs> um, there we have the results of Bulls. I think the Bulls had a very good performance. Brilliant, brilliant. And uh, the, the, I sat on the plane, row number 17. Row number 17 is the escape exit, the emergency exit. And oh, it's the, the best seats in the house. And it was me on the window, next to the window, and then Rayno Benjamin mm. and Charles Stransky. And the, so the cheaters were on our plane flying back uh, to, well, they've had to fly from, there's no plane from, there's no flight from Durban to Bloemfontein. So they have to fly. And they were so chilled, hey, they were really sort of cool and chilled and, and rustig, as they say. And Blade, very humble. Like, yeah. Maybe you could explain to us what you th or your thoughts on on what happened in the, when they scored the second try. I think the Sharks were complaining that there was no advantage. Well, that confused no, me. What happened? No, there? The referee apparently. The referee said, "There's the ball emerged." He said, of "Advantage over," and so the advantage was over. And then they they messed it up, frankly. You know where Vili uh, intercepted because the Sharks had the ball. Um, but apparently the referee had called advantage over. But it wasn't and over. That was what they were complaining about. I mean, the um, ball, there was no advantage over there. What I saw, I don't know. Well, you know, in the ultimate, it wouldn't have made a difference in the in the game, apart from the fact that uh, you know the difference in points difference would have been slightly different. I, 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 you know, I know that there are some real fanatic shark supporters out there, and they, and you know, I don't have a problem with fanatical supporters. I like to think that I'm relatively mutual in terms of, of the lines and that sort of thing. Oh, oh Gary Light there again. He's always a regular. I get you, players. Point system is a nightmare. Taste Brits. Yeah, taste is a regular tweeter, and uh, is uh, thanks for your support. And Gary Late, Mr. Bladen, you can call me Hugh. <laughs> Please, can you explain the advantage rule to me? I doubt that the Sharks got any of build up to Vili Lulu's try. You know, it is a real problem because, in fact, we were, we were watching Joel and, and uh, a guy called Sean Everett, who was, directs the show in the OB van uh, in Durban. Those guys, I mean, the OB van, the outside broadcast van, looks like the inside of a, of a Boeing cockpit. And they have to be really, it's quite a stressful job. They've got to call all they get. If you've got 13 cameras, he's looking at a wall of 13 pictures. And mm -hmm. he's, you know, I've seen it. they shown. get into a rhythm. <coughs> and uh, obviously, once you get, become experienced, but he's got it called. And we were watching the Bulls play the EP, the, the, the Southern Kings. And at one point, the referee called advantage. The Kings got the ball. They passed it about three times. And then somebody kicked it. I think it was George Whitehead. Kicked the ball. Advantage over. No, and, well, the referee called them back and said no advantage and gave EP, the, oh, the Southern Kings, a, a scrum. And I actually made the point to Sean and Joel. I said, now there you go. You see a lot of referees, when he kicked the ball, would have said, advantage over so gary it's well it's a rough it, you know it, it's so, so difficult and it depends on the referee you know some referees will allow a long advantage but and some referees will call as soon as you kick the ball away some referees will call advantage yeah. over but blaze don't you think there's got to be consistency i mean they've got to get the refs and talk to them and say this is the way it is if it's kicked over and i mean the advantage is over that's it you know, I just yeah, well, there's, there's not even consistency, and I, I'm really loath to criticise referees because Andre Watson knows where I come from with referees, is, is that they study the laws, and I mean they can't become referees until they pass the test on the laws. They have to have a certain fitness level, and they, you know, they're right up there with the play. Now there is also a difference on when the guys, you know, crouch, touch, set. There is a difference in timing yes. with the referees. Yes. And so, you know, I, I saw, always sort of say it should be like cadets. You remember, right turn, one, two, three, one, two, yeah. three. I mean, uh, some of those. So it should be crouch, two, three, touch, two, three, set. They should go in the front row themselves and, and bend down like that with that weight behind them. 
Absolutely. It's, uh, it's very difficult. Very difficult. Yeah. Very much. And so. then you can you can you know give away. Okay, it's a free kick for an early set. I the scrum laws you know to me a real problem. You you know you you well, go into a, a a situation where you can lose your bind no, in no, front no. of your own posts and give a, and you three get points. three points. I know. Very difficult. Uh, you know you've got to protect yourself. You can't. I mean you put your hand down. So yeah, I know. So Gary, I'm I I don't know whether we've answered your question, but there is obviously we 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 haven't really answered your question because there are uh, no inconsistencies. <laughs> yeah. Who else has tweeted us? Gareth Pretorius. Otto Simon. We've talked about. What did Gareth say? No, he just retweeted us. Oh, okay. we said we sent out a tweet saying, "Time for Blades on Balls." We're all very interested to hear what Blades is going to talk about today. And that includes blades. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for your support. Thanks for your support. We're going to take a little break. There we go. And I, uh, just in case you've just joined us, Sydney Nomus, Sydney Harold Nomus is with me <laughs> today. Twenty-five consecutive tests for South Africa. Gareth Pretorius has tweeted us you, you actually preempted something gareth because sometimes i on very occasion i'll go to a function and suddenly somebody says won't you say something and quite often i use that line i say i can hardly wait to hear what i'm going to say <laughs> um and gareth tweeted and saying uh, we can't hear we can't wait to hear what blades is going to say including blades <laughs> Gary Late, Gary, uh, you are a Sharks supporter or a Sharks fan? I'm worried about the Sharks because I, you know, I, I back any South African side that's playing against overseas sides. I was born in Johannesburg. Sydney was born in Johannesburg. We both played for the Lions. We played for the Wanderers Club together. We played for the Lions together. We were, uh, Talks van der Linde always used to say to Kurbis Visa, Rumi. <laughs> Rumi, we were roomies. Yeah, Sydney and I. Well, um, we've known each other now. What's it, forty-five, forty-seven years? Yeah, is that possible? That's you know, no, it well, was just possible. We yeah. we knew one another in the nursing home when we were born. <laughs> um, <laughs> who is your roomie on Springbok tours? Well, when you go on a Springbok tour, a long tour, you, um, you, you share with everybody. Uh, for the first half of the tour, you've got to share with the forwards, the backs, with everybody. So you get to know everyone. And then comes the second half of the tour. They, well, when I was there, because it was four and a half month tour to Australasia. Was it four and a half four, months? Yeah. yeah. Four and, and then, a half months, no work. <laughs> well, that's what Yanni Barnard said to me when we were chosen. He said, City Imagine, no work for four and a half months. Huh? Brilliant. Huh? Yeah. And then the second half, they ask you to submit four names or whatever who you'd like to. And then, uh, okay. and, and eventually mm. they put you together. Mm. Oh. Same happened, I mean, uh, the UK tour in 69, 70, that was just over three months. But, you know, you tour the whole you British United Kingdom. I mean. That was the, was that tour worse in terms of Betuachers? Oh, oh, that was the worst. Eh? Than, worse yeah. than the Australian, Australian tour? Yeah, that definitely. The Australian tour, you know, the 71 tour, you were, you were, I mean, on 65, there was nothing, huh? Now, there was an occasional uh, was little demonstration against us, but, you know, one or two people. And that was the tour to Austral Australasia, New Z well, to Australasia, to Australia and New Zealand. Yeah. Um, I'd just like wow. to tell my son, Gary, to actually tune in. He's in Z Zurich. So, Gary, okay, if you're listening, tune in to Board Radio, but you'll see Blaise and I. Okay, my boy, <laughs> cheers. <laughs> just <laughs> taking a phone call. That was, he was phoning me. Bless him. <laughs> oh, From Zurich. Yeah. <laughs> How do you like nice. It? Yeah, so. Uh, yeah, so. Was all about they, I mean, tours. they did have a, a little bit of demonstration in 65. Yes, there were one or two people outside your hotel, and there was always policemen. That's Gary again. <laughs> we'll take the no, call just and see it. if I care. Answer it. I can't, I put him off already. Oh, Hello, Gary. Right. <laughs> Gary, <laughs> I'm just doing the, the ball on the radio with Blaze, your boy. phone and the whole thing. I told my son in Australia to tune yeah, in. Um, I've got to go. Cheers, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Late says, I'm a Sharks fan. The Sharks, the, the Cheetahs were a better side. We talked about that tour in 1965. 
yes. no work for four and a half months. Mm. I was sitting next to Randa Benjamin and just going through. They had to fly from Durban to Joburg and then get on the Bloemfontein pl flight at about one o'clock. So basically your whole Sunday is gone. And then tomorrow they're back at training yep. again and uh, analysis and analyzing on the on the uh, the, the tape of the, of the of Saturday's game going through with the coach and uh, the coaches analyzing you know what you've done and what you've done well and what you've done badly and I believe Heineken may even works on a point system for tackles yeah. you know if you tackle a guy backwards you get five points and if he doesn't go that far back you get Four yeah. points. Is that so? Yeah, no, how, uh, how things have changed, they Unbelievably yeah. technical. In Very fact, so. I, I, I it was too technical. I was saying I was at the Falk School in, in Velcom on Monday. And at one point, I said to the kids, guys, you're doing this for fun. Smile. You know, smile. This is have fun. I mean, this is extramural activities. Yeah. I think the kids are put under so much pressure. Oh, huge. I know, you know, it's now a job. So when you went in 65, did, uh, you were hunting, you were shooting and fishing. Hunting, shooting and fishing, yeah. And skiing. <laughs> well, yeah, couldn't really ski, but we did go up to, where's that? Queenstown. Oh, Queenstown. And did a bit of skiing and instead of, you know, I mean, Hannes Marie trying to get to the top, but he went backwards all the time. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's actually quite a sight to see. Eh? Yeah. It's just beautiful. Though. Yeah. But you know those those tours in those days. Oh, that's how you built up. That's how I mean to play with Money Kizru and to play with John Gainsford and those guys. And that's how I learnt a lot of my rugby. Ah, because, you know, going on those long. And tours. what you were you were only twenty three? Hey? Yeah, yeah. Mm. I played in those trials, and I was only twenty. Yeah, I remember huge, mm. huge. One day when we got a lot of time, I'll tell the people out there. No, uh, unlucky you were not to be a Springbok. No, when <laughs> oh, we're well. talking about the 65 tour. No. And so you were, um, again, uh, we went to Barilocci. I went to Barilocci with Jake White's Springboks. Barilocci is on the western side of Argentina. In fact, you can see the Andes where the Chilean border is. And I played golf with D uh, Derek Kutsia, who was the strength trainer, the fitness guy. With Alistair Kutsia, the Derek Kutsia and I were partners, and, and Jake and, and Alistair Kutsia were partners. Mm -hmm. And we played at a six star hotel. And all around, there were, uh, we just one says we were on the tee, and Jake looked, we looked up, and Jake just said, Guys, just have a look at this. There was a, a lake and then snow covered mountains right around the whole course. And uh, absolutely fantastic. Mm. But the boy and the boys went up the ski slopes. They went up. They, they, were, they sort of had a five-day break before going to Europe. And Jake said, "No ways. There's no ways you're skiing." Don't blame him. Um, which wow. you know you can't blame the guys. And the, in, in fact, the blokes didn't really want to ski. In, you know, in case they broke a leg because that did, then damages their career. I was also, you know, we were chatting about. You know, on Saturday, the, the, well, last night, the Sharks left for overseas. And, well, you uh, started talking about how worried you are about them. Yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll go into that, to be oh. about their try-scoring ability. But now you can imagine the nightmare for the, for the manager and the, and the guy who arranges all the travel, because could see a did his shoulder. Um, to Herrera is doubtful. Yeah. You know, we don't know whether Jean Dacel was, was correct. Uh, well, Jean Dacel was in the re original team sheet. Yes. Becomes a bit of a nightmare for, our comment for us commentators, you know. I go through all the lists of the names, then I write down how many games they've played, how many tries they've scored. Mm. Occasionally, if they, because, you know, Mayor Bosman had his 28th birthday on Friday. So, you know, you just in commentary say he turned yeah. 28 yesterday. Sort well, you of did thing. your homework and then they changed the move. And the then we yeah. got the team sheet to say that Peter Steph de Toy was moved from lock to flank, flank that uh, Anton Bresler was coming into the lock position, because that Ningani was moving on to the right wing, and uh, Kutsil was going to be playing on the left wing instead of uh, Sean Robinson. So now you know you've you got an array. I always write my teams down in pencil. For this exact reason, mm -hmm. because suddenly John Plumtree made all the all the changes. Well, the Sharks, I'm worried. Well, I'm worried, is that the Sharks have they they didn't score in their first two games, then they scored one try and then they scored two or vice versa, then they scored ten against the Rebels. Yes. 
Okay, so that's 13 tries. They've now played another three games. And haven't scored. They haven't scored a try. Yeah, yeah. Now, some have the theory that it's Patrick Lambie who is, is, is not getting his backline going at pace. It's funny, you know, Patrick Lambie is a baby-faced, good-looking boy, comes from a very good family and the whole thing, and the girls swoon over him, and if you're critical of the guy, everybody sh craps on you. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, they, I mean, initially, I loved Patrick Lambie. Why? Because he, he created things. He, he ran and, and, and made gaps for his centres. But now, I don't know, everything's become a, like a kicking game. It's yeah. uh, out, they, they losing possession all the time. I don't know why they do that. I really don't. Counter-attack and, you know, sort of go down get the ball and keep possession. I think it's it's amazing how just about everybody, and we're talking about the likes of Joel Stransky. I've in recent weeks been with Dani Gerber. I've been with Casey Pino. We've been on these yes. panels. Yes. This is my Afrikaans so good. Is. Okay. Want ons praat, want ons Engels praat, is want iemand met Carlos Spencer praat. Ja, ja, ek kan nie verstaan nie, ja. And um, just about all these guys are saying that we're not moving the ball into space. That and and it is a, a form of bulls rugby. But when bulls, the bulls won the Super Rugby. They had the, when you go through it, the spine of their team. They had the best lock forward combination in the world. Yes. They had the best scrum half in the world. Mornay Stain was on top of his form. They had, uh, you know, they w moved the ball around. Look what happened on Saturday when Bjorn Basson, oh, I like that guy. Yeah. When Bjorn Basson yeah. got the ball, how he, he just glides. Yeah. Eh? yeah. yeah. Now, no. you know, on Saturday, uh, and those guys, the, the Sharks, I don't, I don't think the outside centre got the ball. No, i tell you what. And then, uh, I mean, I, I, we've discussed this before, Huey, and I mean, Franz Stein is an incredible rugby player, but Franz Stein is awful. There's well, no he was dropped because yeah. he's off. And, and I said to you, Ryan Kankowski is also. I mean, uh, dropped uh, because yeah. dropped out of the squad completely. But, but you know, there's a reason for it as well. with the overseas commitments. I mean, Ryan Kankowski, where does he play? They no, played in Japan. In Japan, yeah. they come back here. Oh, plays is such a thing as being stale. Yeah. I mean, you, you overplayed. Yes, definitely. Yeah. I really think that. Well, uh, you know, you, uh, it's funny because coaches can lose their jobs if they if they don't. The fans turn against the coach, and then the president turns against the coach, and then the committee have a vote, and and out goes the coach. coach. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. And you know, you, you first of all, he's got some of his best players injured. I mean, Bismarck Duplessis is you know What's happened injured. No, he's injured. But for how much longer is he? I really know. Well, one, there's right? talk of him possibly coming back now. But you know, you wonder, you worry about those front rankers. You have to. When well, you talk about overplaying, mm. can you imagine how many scrums that those guys? I mean, John Smith's played a hundred tests and a hundred of super. Well, over a hundred of super tests 15. and super rugby. Yeah. That's and how many times you've got to hit into that scrum. And how many times you've got to hit the scrummy machine in practice. I admire those guys. I mean, I mean it's just yeah. awesome. I really do admire them. And uh, I saw Osterunt. Osterunt looked a little bit like he had a bit of a bubby. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I don't know what that looks like. Eh? Climbed <laughs> over, he climbed over. He's in good in Nick Ors. Oh, but he's a big man. Yes. But, you know, he, you could see him on the field and uh, wonderful work he's doing. Now, you see that Michael Horak is the defence coach. Why does that name ring a bell with me? Well, because he played Four. fullback for the Cheetahs. Okay. And then he played, in fact, he went, spent some time in England and played oh. for England under 21s. Yeah. And uh, mm. also played uh, club rugby over there. But he's their, he's their defence coach and their defence has improved a huge amount. It's difficult. Well, and Nick, I mean, Nick Mallet sort of said, you know, you're, you're weak. He, I think he was offered the job in Toulon. And oh, he said, well, eh? the pressure is unreal. You've got an attack coach, a defense coach, then you've got to analyze. Then you've got to have a one-on-one -on -one with the players and, you know, explain to them why they're not doing this or explain to them why they're not doing that. Explain to them, to Ryan Kankowski, why I'm dropping him. Yanni Duplessis. I think Yanni Duplessis was just, frankly, was rested um, because 
Mm. You know, he's played all the he's played all the games, but uh, there are a few of those sharks players who are just not producing at the moment. Eh? Definitely. I mean, they're on a tour now, and I, I really, as much as I, I'd like them to win every game, but I can't see it. Gary Honeyball tweeted us, I like, wow, 75% is aspirational. That's a big word, hey? For me this year, aspirational, so he has ambitions of hitting 75% and hovering around 60%. That's what most of the guys who are involved with Supersport tell me that they're hovering around uh, 60% and they're right up there at the top. I mean, it's very difficult to predict games. Then we've got Duncan Betteridge. Mr. Hugh. Mr. Hugh, so glad you are back on air. There is an... A petition. Oh, a petition on Facebook to sack Plumtree. Your take on that awesome show. Thanks. Thank you for your tweet, Duncan. Yeah, well, you know, Plumtree... You know, oh, people can turn against you quickly, hey? He was a king. You know, Plumtree was... You know, and I remember Rudolf Stroeli. What happened was that... Um, oh, the fullback, the pocket rocket. Come, Sam. The pocket rocket. Brent Russell. Brent, Brent. Russell. Well done, Brent Simon. Russell came on because Jakub van der Westhuizen got injured in a test match at oh. Newlands. And, and we were playing Australia, Australia, and Brent Russell had a blinder. Straight away. As a he blinder. I remember that so okay. clearly. And the following week, Rudolf Stroeli picked him for in the fullback position to play against New Zealand at Loftus. Within the first five minutes, he had, I think, dropped the ball twice, yes. and Joe Rockathoko scored certainly from one of them. Now, Rudolf Stroeli, you know, he's sitting up there in his coach's box, tearing his hair out. It's not his fault that, uh, you know, I'm picking on that one incident of Brent Russell because it led to a try, and it sort of sticks in my memory. I mean, I think he was, he was badly done by because he should have played fly half all his life, frankly. But anyway, I'm digressing. We're we going around in circles. But it's not John Plumtree's fault that uh, you know players aren't, aren't producing. What it may be his fault is that the Sharks are playing the wrong pattern and that he's not getting those Sharks into that, to that back line. Even Carlos Spencer said, you know, South Africans are inclined to, even when they hit the ruck, when they hit a tackle, they're inclined to have the ball, can you see me, in front of them like that. Yes. Can they see me, Maz? Yeah. yeah. So they've hit the ball. And Carlos Spencer said, in New Zealand, they taught, you know, to carry the ball here under your arm and hit the ruck like this. So the ball is always available. And we yeah. tend to just carry this ball, you know, sort of well, like brute force, bang, into, and, and, you know, think we're going to run over people. But if you hold it there in front of you, I, I like that because you've got the ball over the tackle. But today they also they tackle so high it doesn't matter. But um, we were taught in uh, the backline players hold the ball over the tackle and you can you know distribute yeah, it either way yeah, even sure. if you are tackling. No, you see that quite often. But when mm. the guys know that they, you know, they're going because they hey they're not thinking about passing. No, they're gonna no, they're they, gonna hit no. that tackle and they're going to set up another ruck and etc etc. Bruce Bruce Schefferman Schefferman advantage. Law, it's not rules, the laws of rugby. He said, advantage law sucks, S U X. <laughs> exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. Well, I believe in it, I believe in the advantage because you know, you it keeps the game moving a lot more than it would if the referee had to blow immediately. There was a knock on, but it is the interpretation thereof that is a bit of a problem. Um, if I just like you know, before I forget, you be mentioning Carlos Spencer. Spencer, mm. you know, he was in my office the other day, and he tells me while I'm just thinking of it that uh, he's he's going to do boxing, the same as Quade Cooper. Now. Uh, he's, he's going to box in Abu Dhabi. Yes. Yeah. You know, in Dubai. Yeah. He's going to no, do uh, some. Or Abu well, Dhabi. somebody yeah. said it was Abu Dhabi. Mm. Is he fit? Wow! Unbelievable. He's training out in a gym in uh, in uh, Northcliffe. And uh, you know he was he was going to gym we, when we were in Volcom. He's going for runs. He eats egg whites only, uh, and he's he's very fit. 
Mm, just there wanted was a, to bring there was a player who played with flair. Quite interesting. He said that when he didn't ever play tackling rugby until he was about nine years old. Now he takes his little boy, who's at Dresden Primary, to uh, a clinic at Pirates, and he said they they all tackling one another. How They've got the these little eight-year-olds running around mm. with scrum caps on. And, you know, to me, that's crazy. They should be wow. just handling, 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 running, dodging people. I agree with you 100%. Um, you know, and, take the, and, and bring some fun into the game. Yeah, yeah. As we, uh, I mean, in Balicki's rugby, you watch it be, you know, it's uh, sort of curtain raises to big games at Loftus. And these little <laughs> guys are, are really going for no, each other. No, well, they play tag rugby. They wear tags around their... Around their, their well, that's side. a new thing. That, that's what Carlos said. They play tag rugby. And um, that's what they do at, at, at Loftus. They don't play tackling. They play okay. tag. So they wear a tag on either side. Yes. And as, ta as you're tagged, so to speak, you, you've got to pass the ball. Much better. Well, you know, also we, <laughs> we had these, this clinic, <clears throat> excuse me, in, in, in Velcom. We even had fathers storming up and down the touchline. What? Sort of screaming at the, at the kids <laughs> okay. if they dropped the ball. <laughs> and, and that I've witnessed that day. Let's get the fun back into sport and let's well, you see can't. if we it's can. all you know, so professional now, Blades. And yeah. you know, uh, but that's what worries no, me. But I mean, no when you're seven, eight, nine, ten years old and, and right up to, to those, uh, you know, the, the punch-ups at, at schoolboy games and things like that. Did you watch the Demon Felt? Um, no. Play or at New Kimberley? Play Carp? Yes. Yeah. Actually, I mean, the... the good? The, uh, because the competition is so high there, I mean, you know, really, they gonna, they just gun for each other. I mean, the schoolboy rugby. I did last year. I did Uffies against Uffies in Pretoria, against uh, Grey College, from Bloemfontein. Yes. And we sat on a on a, a scaffolding platform that they'd built right in the front of the grandstand, so we were far closer to the players than we normally are. When we when we commentating at big rugby grounds, and the Uffies boys and the the grey boys, you can't, first of all you can't believe the size of them. Sydney, the centres are a hundred k's, okay, Schoolboy. and and they climbed into one another. And I remember getting home and saying to my wife, I said, if if and we we lost one game when I was in matric at at Kess, and so we you know we had a good season, we had a good side. About Can I ask who you lost to? We lost... <laughs> Help my car. No! Help my car, funnily enough, won. You don't have to shout at me. <laughs> Help my car won the... They, it was called the Administrator's yes. Cup in those days. Yes. Any of you have got old SA rugby annuals that give you Administrator's Cup records, you'll see that Help my car in 1962 won the Administrator's Cup and we played him a curtain raiser to Transvaal against the British Lions. Did you play for Transvaal that day? What year is that? Yes. 62. I don't think no, you did. No, 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 no. I, 62, no. Well, you were 21. <laughs> no, 1960, no, I didn't. I was 63, I played my first game. No, did you? Yeah. Okay. Well, we, and, and we played Help McCarr at Ellis Park, Curtin Razor, Transvaal against the British Lions, and we beat Help McCarr. No, we lost to Parktown Boys High. Okay, and Parktown had a very good team. I mean, they had a really good team. About four or five. Things. Duncan Bell is one who comes to mind. Yeah. Played flank for Coke Transvaal. Coke no, Coke had left. Oh. But there were a couple of guys who played uh, at least provincial under-20 rugby. And in our side, we had about five guys who played provincial under-20 rugby. One being my great mate, Jeff Smith, who played yes. number eight for Transvaal under 20. Yes. And for Wits and Gaby Lurie played for Wits first team. I remember Gaby. Uh, Jeff Renew played for Transvaal. Wow. Uh, Mick Banfield played for the Wanderers first side. Jimmy Punter played for Western Transvaal under 20s. That's this man's memory. I mean, it's uh, not it fair. Was, <laughs> it, we, we had a hell of a side. And I went back to my wife and I said, if we'd remained the same standard as we were back then and played the boys from Offies or Grey, who were the standard that they are, they would have thumped us 100 nil. No, I mean, a, no, it's, it's all unreal. It's all changed, do you know, guys at home, do you know that the last year's South African school side, they, had, they listed their weights and their sizes and their, and their heights and everything? 
and they listed the starting team in 1992 when we played the All Blacks at Ellis Park mm. back into World Rugby after a 10-year absence. Yes. The South African school side of last year was bigger than that Springbok side. <laughs> I can't believe it. I mean, look yeah. at Frick Dupree. Frick was great. Frick was one of, I mean, well, the, the, the player, of the, player of, the of the century. Yeah. And Frick was the same height as Ruan Pino, for example. Ruan Pino, six foot one. Frick was only six foot one. And Frick said to me, well, today's rugby, you'd, b you'd have to play scrum off. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's unreal, eh? Frick's got a wonderful sense, sense of humor. Oh, yeah. the best. And one as an after Mac speaker, uh, as, yeah, dinner, after Mac, yeah. after dinner speaker, uh, he's great. Eh? Yeah, very funny. Mm. Very funny. Let's have a break. Five for fighting, Superman. Now, I believe some of you oaks out there don't like my choice of music. What's wrong with Whitney Houston and uh, some of those guys? I can't hear myself in my f earphones. That's a bit better. Should we turn, tweak this up? I need to clarify my question early this morning because a lot of you are saying Raymond Rule. And let me tell you, we've had instructions from SA Rugby that it is Rule and not Rule. Raymond himself said he doesn't really mind, but uh, frankly, it, it, it is Rule. Uh, when somebody else has said Bjorn Besson. My question was in history. The Joe Roth and uh, Gear, Rico Gear, have scored 15 tries in a super rugby season. And the South African who has scored most tries in a season in history, in the history of, of super, super rugby, rugby, which South African holds the South African record for the number of tries scored in a Super Rugby season. Heinrich Latekhan. Uh, yeah, the guys who said Raymond Rule uh, obviously think that I've asked about the most tries this season. Mark Watson. Do you think that's Chaka's son? Well, that's what I was thinking. It would be nice. Uh, former uh, provincial winger, Mark Watson. Your spelling is spot on, by the way. Um, well, who else have we, have we had? We had from Peter Bodkin, Bjorn Besson, and Pierre Raymond Rule. Yeah, no, I said... Uh, J.P. Peterson and uh, Dirk. Rouge Sprong was not happy with the, the Sharks' behavior after the whistle. I must say that, you know, they were a bit wound up and they were... They, uh, in fact, Hanyani Shimangi told me that uh, a few of the Sharks boys had been quite rude to the referee afterwards. Well, you could see it. Walking the game, they... they obviously opened their mouth and said something to him. Definitely. And Dirk Snook Snook Henkmans. Henkmans. Yeah. Snook Henkmans. J.P. Peterson in 2007, 12 tries. One out. But it wasn't J.P. Peterson. The guy who holds the South African record scored 13 tries. In Now I'm not going to give you the year. Uh, because and we also had a tweet from um, who was it? The guy who works for Rugby Three Six Five, Yonder Quinning. Yonder Quinning. Nice to know that the rugby guys are are tuning into Balls Radio, and yeah, we were going great. to. We were trying to. <laughs> I was trying to get Andre Watson on the phone because Andre Watson could clarify the situation in terms of that advantage law. And then I tried to get, uh, I have, uh, have Andre Watson's number and I have Craig Hubert's number and I tried to get Craig Hubert on the phone, but he obviously had said the c connection or the network busy, not connected. He's probably flying back from Australasia. Mm -hmm. All those guys fly, hey? they're all over the place. They build up air miles like you cannot believe because they fly business class. Oh so yeah, they and the teams, don't they? I think the teams also fly business class. Yeah. Mm. Well, I certainly know the Springbok team flies business class. The uh, Some of the guys in the Free State team, in particular the captain, was in business class yesterday. But, uh, and some of but I think that's just an accommodation situation. Mm, yeah. Because the plane was packed. Amazing. 10 o'clock in the morning from Durban to Joburg on a Sunday. Was going to say Aplon and De Jong then remembered 
Raymond Rule. No, wrong. Yeah, no, the, uh, Raymond Rule is the top try scorer this, this season. season. With only four, by the way, uh, which is not massive. No. And uh, yeah. so Bjorn Besson, oh, Bjorn Besson, I really, when he, he got the ball on Saturday, when he came on as a replacement, great to see him back, but he just, he just glides, doesn't he? And Raymond Rule is so quick as well. They just died. Who were the quick wings around when you were playing? Oh, Blazer. Well, Janny Engelbrecht. Janny Engelbrecht was quite quick. Yeah, he was. Oh. No doubt. Um, I'm just trying to think. Chick's tutor wasn't that quick. No, he was quite a... He, he was, was a, a big, big lad. Big yeah. lad, yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, he sort of... You were quick. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm told. I, but I, you were picked in 65 as a centre. Correct. Give yes. us a day in a 65 tour that you remember. Well, it's a horrible day that I remember. And, oh, one day I do remember was in Austra playing against Australia where I was really playing well with Maniki Zhu. And then to the extent that uh, the selectors, who were the coach and the manager and the captain of the of the you know, Darby de Villiers, and they picked three centres to play against Australia. And eventually, oh, I was so happy I'm going to play my first test possibly because I really, uh, you know, wherever Manikis went, I would follow. So it looked quite good for me. Yeah. And I you know, scored a few tries because of what... Again, it, uh, an Australian in, side. Y yeah. yeah. Mm, but, you know, Perth, at Western Australia, were nothing at that point. Yeah, you beat at, them 100-0 you know, or, or something. Or something, yeah. There were two games that no, day. No wonder you scored a few tries. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then, the morning of the test, they went for experience, and they went for Manu Rue and uh, John Gainsford. Very upset. And you were upset. I'll yeah. I was going to ask you, you know, does it, do the other guys in the team... Is this uh, get the hell in because they're not selected? Well, no, not really. I mean, you know, you sort of uh, spoken to before, and we all won, you know, as one. Even the, you know, the, when the reserves came in, they would be part of the team talks, and um, you know, you, you, you're just a team, and you're just happy to be part of, and you're just pulling for your side to win. And uh, I got the impression on one or two of the tours that I was on, because I, you know, I mean, not as a player, but as a as a broadcaster, mm. seventeen overseas trips. You have made. Uh huh. And yeah. there were times when I, I got the distinct impression that a few of the guys who'd been left out of the test team were really upset and down the hell in. And oh, you know, deep down you were upset. I yeah. mean. I know that's one thing I remember of that tour, and then the other part was when I pulled a hamstring when on a Tuesday game before the test, and they came to me and they said, "You're definitely in the running for the first test against the All Blacks in Wellington." As a centre. As a centre. Yeah. I hadn't played wing. Nothing. <coughs> yeah. Isaac van Heerden was responsible for me playing wing. He always said I should be on the wing. I should be on the wing. And it happened when I played um, for the SA Barbarians against a Keith Oxley Keith Oxley farewell match. In yeah. the towel invitation 15. And whatever I touched turned to gold that day. So from that day on, I, was, I became a wing. And then you got, I mean, you got picked as a wing. But you were, were, were you already a springbok then? Um, when you yes, played on the yes, wing? Yes, yes. You were? Yes. I played my first test centre, three tests centre. I yeah. replaced John Gainsford, which was a, a, one hell of a thing for me. Tell me about the telegram he sent you. He sent me a telegram. Obviously, oh, he had been through the mill. He's, had, you know, he played 33 test matches. Yeah. And they'd only scored eight test tries. It just shows you in those days. I don't know why, but... And Yanni Engelbrecht, the same. 33 tests, eight test tries. Yeah. And then I played centre, and I was chosen a centre, and John Gainsford sent me a telegram. Like, I'm sad, man. Like, I'm glad. Play well, John Gainsford. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah it was. What a sports. And then 19 tests. I'd already scored six test tries. I was never aware of records. And I thought, whoa. And I couldn't score another one in six tests. I scored two more, but they were disallowed. What is this about birthdays, Sam? Well, we just turned one year old. Oh, wow. And it's Ian and Sasha's birthday Sasha's today. Sasha's birthday. And Ian F. Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. wow. They're both 33. Happy birthday to those guys. And you, Balls Radio, is one year old. Well, we were turned one year old about two weeks ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Mm. And so we're going to Mozambique to celebrate our birthday. You're going to broadcast in we're Mozambique? We're going to broadcast from Mozambique. Yeah. And um, Darren and the team, and Sasha and Ian, and Daisy Fensham are, are all going. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah. You didn't crack a nod, I'm I afraid. know. I was just going to So I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> it's only paid staff. No. 
<laughs> nice one. Nice one. Nice. Yeah. nice. We were going to try and we've we've left a message for the great, the one and only H O de Villiers to to phone us, and we'll have a chat to H O. H O was such a hero that they actually made a T-shirt that the H was a goalpost and the O was a rugby ball flying over the goalpost. Yeah, he was known as the darling of Newlands. Yeah, no, well, I mean, he was a good-looking guy and well, still is. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and uh, what a player. What kind of show is this? No, you, it's a rugby show. We're talking about a it's rugby a, player. It's sports. I want to bring up a bit of cricket just now. <laughs> <laughs> you should talk about your 10 best-looking sportsmen here. <laughs> no, I mean I wouldn't have a clue. Thanks, Sam. I'm just saying, HO was a he was a good-looking boy, and he was a real hero because, you know, he was one of those guys who ran the Mickey Herber, who played three tests for South Africa, was a guy who ran with the ball, as well. He scored a famous try. Mark Watson. Yeah. My boot Brian heard my name being mentioned. My dad was the late Doug Watson. Oh wow. I knew him well. We did. We did. We went to a few functions, uh, Doug Watson, and uh, that we did together. We we were sort of like the guest speakers and that type of thing. Okay, Mark. That's my boot. Brian heard my name being mentioned. Okay, Doug Watson. He worked for Graham Pollock. Wasn't he? Who the is the Graham Pollock's got the highest batting average? When you look at, at batting averages. They, you've got to play 20 test matches to come onto the list. And Graham Pollock played 22 test matches, I think, before we were banned from world cricket. Graham Pollock's bat test batting average is just over 60, which I think I'm right in saying is the highest of any player living. Sir Donald Bradman, of course, had a batting average of 99.9. So many real. Well, it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. And Graham Pollock has the. I, I played quite a lot of golf with Graham. He's now stopped playing golf, but we've uh, uh, mm -hmm. played a lot of golf together. Got a batting average just over 60. Yeah. 60. Nobody has come up with the answer to my question. Who was South African has scored the most tries in a season in Super Rugby history? He has a clue from Sid. He played in the World Cup. Ah, uh, well, the <laughs> moment we say that, Dirk Snook Kankermans has come up with the answer. Okay, there you go. We're not oh. going to give it yet. Why not? That'd be horrible <laughs> now. <laughs> okay, Dirk, I want to tell you that you are right, and Simon says we're not going to give it yet because uh, we go, we're getting further tweets. Doug Watson, what a... He won the World uh, 1976 World Bowls Championship yeah, at I Zoo Lake. I remember yeah. clearly, yep. Yeah, Very what a true. player he was. And I remember him, you know, how he practiced and practiced and practiced and practiced. And uh, he was great. Well, we haven't spoken to, to, too much about cricket. Wonderful to see, you know, the, the, the chances that South Africans are getting in the IPL, the Indian uh, League, the T20 League. I, I sit and watch that uh, those games just about most evenings. Some of them are very, very exciting, I must no, be no, honest. No, no, they're then. terrific. But who's this boy who did well? He got 80 from 40 balls or something. I didn't see him. Now, Quinton de Kock has got, got an opportunity. I mean, there he is, about 19 years old, and Quinton, he, well, he can't buy a run at the moment, but um, he's the opportunity for the kid to play, I think... Uh, you know, in that it, Kings Punjab 11. Now, I'll tell you why. Now, the penny has dropped because Ray Jennings coaches that team. And Ray Jennings would have seen Quinton de Kock. And Ray Jennings ran the South African under-19 side. And Ray Jennings, I think, was possibly the best keeper I've ever seen. He was brilliant. And, I, you know, I used to go to cricket and watch it a lot. And I, when I heard Graham Pollock batting, I'd be there. There's no doubt. I mean, that was just a pleasure to watch Jeeps the way he batted and I remember uh, Jennings he was such an agile yeah incredible wicket keeper he was really he was outstanding my era when I played the league cricket, the best wicket keeper around was Johnny Waite Gee. and Johnny Waite used to stand up to some really guys who were quite rapid guys oh, yeah. like Tiger Lance Tiger Lance was was you know to, to a first league player was quite rapid. I mean, to Ali Bacher and the boys, he'd be pedestrian, military medium. <laughs> yeah, you they played, you played it, against all those guys, eh? I did. Mm. I did play against all those guys, mm. and I could tell you, Tiger Lance was sharp. 
and uh, Johnny Waite used to stand up to those guys. But uh, Jet Jennings was uh, really good. Why, uh, Quinton de Kock, was, he's getting an opportunity, and the likes of uh, Fana Marva is uh, also a, a guy who, who I think is so competitive. I love watching him play. What's his first name? Rolf. Uh, Rolf. Rolf, Rolf yeah, Marva. Yeah. He's, he's a, a super mm. guy to watch. Uh, Brian Habana for the ball. Sean Combrunk, Niemann. Does knee uh, Brian Habana knee? Um... If you if you really are freaky about rugby, there is a South African rugby annual, which improves and improves and improves every year. It gets better and better and better, and uh, all this information is in that South African rugby annual, freely oh. available from uh, well, I, I got mine I think uh, given to me by SuperSport. So Ryan, Ryan Orange is wrong. Sean Combrink, no. Oh. Brian Habana has scored the, the most overall tries. The most overall tries. He's, but the guy who's, I can't remember his name, it's the New Zealand guy with the curly black hair. Howie, Howard. Yeah, no. Ha Howie, something like who? that. Who? Oh, gosh, he plays for, he plays in... Uh, He's still playing. Yes, but uh, in England. Yeah, yeah. For one playing night. in Ireland. Or Ireland for Ulster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm? Howie. H O W. No. Oh gosh, I can still, I can see. I him. can see him. Crazy. We'll get Howlett, Doug Howlett. Howlett. Oh, Dougie Howlett. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Darren was busy talking to me. Uh, you, uh, you knew that. Doug, you knew that. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. I knew it was Dougie I Howlett uh, holds the overall record, and then it goes down a couple. Dang, Joe Roth is right up there, and Brian Habana has. You're quite right there. Ryan, Ryan Arons and Sean Combrink. Combrink. Sean is right about for the most tries right. ever. Yeah. Uh, my question was which South African holds the record for the most tries in a season? The, the most tries in a season, the record is 15 tries held by Joe Roth and by uh, Rico Gear. And then which South African has scored the most tries in a season? And one of you has got it right. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a frog jumping around. Um, I think that's covered all about the, the, the tweets and Twitters. Who was the best wing you ever played against? Brian Williams. <coughs> no hesitation. No hesitation. No hesitation. He was brilliant and he actually became a, quite a good friend of mine. But he, you know, he was massive and he had those thighs of his. I mean, a real sort of... Um, Good size step Samoan, like that. yeah. Hey. God, he would run like that straight at you and then just go like a... And you had no chance. Yeah. No chance of going With inside those massive you. massive thighs. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, the first test I marked him and he scored a try. I scored a try. Second test, they moved him to the other wing. And I... You were happy. I was very happy. <laughs> <laughs> I was so happy. Third test, they played him centre. I was happy. Fourth test, they brought him back on my wing. I was <laughs> I wasn't too oh, really? happy there. Yeah. 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 But then when he came in 76, he played center in one of the tests. I remember, mm, in I fact, he made a bit of a mess. He dropped the ball or something. And Johan Wersthausen got the ball and um, uh, almost, almost intercepted it at Newlands and ran about 50 meters because of a mistake that... Brian Williams I had think made. he was 19 when he came out. Yeah, yeah he was. He was, he was yeah. about 19. He was 19, yeah. so you, you're talking 1976, he was 25, right? so he's still young there. Well, so I can tell you that Sydney, Sydney and I had lunch with Graham Thorne the other day. Graham Thorne, who married a South African girl after the 1970 tour. And he was a real, he was a free spirit, Graham Thorne, a bit of a, a, a yeah, free spirit which some of the, the the traditionalists didn't really like because he he would tell people to mm -mm. to mm -hmm. shove off <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but he could if, play rugby he but really he was a really good rugby player and then he married a south african girl and came back and lived in south africa unfortunately they got divorced and uh actually she passed away he uh, he played for northerns along with uh, amongst others jan wersthausen and and uh, willif de Meyer. And Frick de Priel would have been in those sides. Yes. And Sid and I had, had lunch. He now lives in Queenstown in, on the South Island. Uh, did you go to Queenstown? 
Yes, when uh, on tour. Yeah. Oh yeah, we toured the whole of New Zealand. I mean, uh, you know, in those days, I'm sure even today they take you around. I mean, we saw from the bottom of South Island right to the top of North Island, everything. Yeah. I mean, the most beautiful. Place. No, they took you. I think they what they do is they entertain you more. Yes. And, you know, as you said, you went hunting, shooting and fishing. Oh, I've got photographs of me with... What you and got, skiing. You know, everything. And, you you know, you got you got entertained a lot more. Now the guys get on a... They get in the bus. On the Sunday, they go and swim to swim off the, the muscular strain of the Saturday game. Mm. And they go and swim. And then Monday, they train all day. And then they'll do hand-eye coordination with uh, when Cheryl Calder was on the on the tour they would have their computers and do hand eye coordination by the way Nas Buerta's daughter's been doing hand eye co coordination in her hockey team they brought some people out from Argentina and okay. they are doing it when you say some people say it's a load of rubbish other people say it's really good I mean she had, uh, Cheryl Calder Dr. Cheryl Calder I beg your pardon helped the um, the England team when they won the World Cup in 2003. I recall that, yeah. She's helped cricket teams and that sort of thing. And uh, so they then do hand-eye coordination. Then they'll go to gym. The, did you go to a gym in 65? No. <laughs> I went to gym. Remember Rex Park? Yes. I went to his gym because I wanted to sort of build up a bit. And he said, what position do you play? And I said, well, I'm playing centre. He said, you rely on your speed? I said, yes. He said, well, you know, I'm not going to do the legs because, again, I might get too muscular or whatever, and it's just going to slow you Theories, down. Yeah. Yeah. So I stopped going to gym. I, I went to gym, uh, but, but did quick repetitions. But I only went to gym when I was about 23 because I had a knee that kept jumping out. Mm, I when I kicked the ball, my knee would jump out. <laughs> That's why you retired eventually. Early. Well, yeah, to an extent. They also, you know, they dropped me for the Curry Cup final, the well it's a trivial pursuit question and that at the risk of vanity my name i don't know whether you know this simon my name is on the curry cup i and didn't know my, that mine yeah. isn't <laughs> and i never i didn't ever play in a curry cup final and my name in 1971 they dropped me for the curry cup final and the great yanni barnard played but my name is, Yanni Barnard's name is there as well, but my name is on the curry cup. And I wasn't on the bench. I had to buy a ticket to get into the game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd been and dropped. I played the whole season. And I got injured the week before to get, you know, playing in the semifinals. Yeah, mm. against Free State. Or oh, Greek was or Free State. Well, yeah, Greek was Free State. Yeah. Mm. In 70, we, we had, they had a very funny sort of three-tier system. In 70, we didn't lose a game. We drew with, the, with Natal, 14 all at Kings Park. And I mean, we had David de Villiers and Pete Kreiling and you and Peter Cronier. Peter Cronier was Poison. a wonderful player. Brilliant. Brilliant. Peter Swanson was a Springbok, didn't play in a test. Mickey Gerber played? No, he, not, no, not in 70. No, he had retired. It was Yanni van Dierventer. Yes, yes. Tobias de Toy on the one wing, David de Villiers. And then we mm. had Saki Salmon, yeah. Robbie Barnard, all Springbok. Saki de Klerk became a Springbok. Kevin de Klerk became a Springbok, but he didn't play in He's 70. No, no. Played in 71, though. Yes. Straight out of the under-20s. For a lock, it was almost unheard of for a lock to... to, to well, they regarded him as the next Frick de Prier, Kevin. I yeah. mean, he was the next Frick de Prier, and he, 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 he also got messed around by the selectors a little bit, I think. Well, that's where we, oh. we were going now into you know, uh, being banned from uh, international rugby, so it was all... But, you know, Kevin played against the... What did they call them? All Blacks who came out here? No, he didn't. Yeah, 86 Cavaliers. Yes, he was, Cavaliers. No, he didn't. He didn't. He sure? tried. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not going to argue with you. <laughs> that I'm not going to do. The locks were uh, Skulk Berger and... Big Skulk. Big Skulk. Skulk Senior. Yeah. And I, d oh, I can't remember. I'll think of it. I'll think of the other lock's name. Happy could birthday, it be, Sasha. Could it, <laughs> hey, happy birthday. Sasha's just <laughs> arrived and... It's his birthday. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Lovely to uh, see him. And Brian, he brought, and for the from Bulls two Brian, great almost. legends. Thank you very, very much. And he's brought, he's brought <laughs> cake. <laughs> I have lots of cake. <laughs> <laughs> we got a we got a, a little uh, thing here about Sasha, a sex pot or something. <laughs> a <What>? sex pot. <laughs> yeah. That's from Just Sex Po. Down. It's from Sex Po. Is yeah. It? What's a sex pot, lads? A sex pot. Yeah, tell us. It's a, a reefer you smoke. <laughs> 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 uh, 
oh, God, was yes. conducting it's a four good. play. <laughs> <laughs> We are for blushing. <laughs> I think everybody is. <laughs> oh, wonderful. So, now, Sydney, tell me about the Betuachers on that 69 tour. Well, this, I can tell you a lot about them. Some of them, well, I'm going to use the word we murdered them. <laughs> because Did we had you? To. Yeah, one or two. And, you know, the guys, they used to walk around the hotel. This is in Australia in 71. But it's 1969, 70 was bad. It really was. I mean, they found, you know, we all had to get off our plane and fly to Ireland because there was a bomb square bomb scare on you know, on the aeroplane and then you get not off. nice I mean that, no. that, you know that's it's scary isn't it and for two you hours you don't know whether that bomb's going to go off or not I just you know, eventually say get back on the same plane because they cleared it yeah and that was very scary yeah and then in a hotel room in London that uh, I can't remember the name of the hotel but there was they found a bomb wrapped up in a flag and again we had to clear the hotel, Hyde, not the Hyde Park, oh gosh, please, I can't remember the name, but Lani Hotel. And on the third floor where we were all you know, staying, there they found a bomb. They found a bomb? Yeah, and then all these guys, you know, you think uh, you're playing, I mean, they used to throw half crack a bottle, put tacks in the bottle, uh -huh. and then throw the bottle onto the field so the bottle would break and they got all glass and tacks all over the field. Yeah. Stop game. Everyone pick up glass, but you know, you, you're still worried that you're going to fall and cut yourself on the glass. It was, you know, I had a nervous breakdown on that tour. Did you? Mm. Yeah, I'm not uh, nice. No. In, in tell me, tour. Sydney, and you, I mean, didn't you have people ch outside your hotel chanting oh, anti-racist mm. slogans and yes. all the time keeping mm. you awake? Very much so. And, you know, they, in, and like in Australia also, that happened again. Yeah. But, you know, we were like used to it now. This is, you know, we part of uh, <laughs> this tour in 6970 and now 71. 71 was also bad. And then, of no. course, Van on Klaassen's side had mm. two well, the uh, flower, had, had the flower bomb flower bombs. And, yeah. and it does get you. I mean, on that 69. Did any of the Springboks ever go out and maybe just sort of uh, flatten somebody? Or? Well... No, with no oh, names. Actually, so no long names. ago, and no names, no, no oh. factual. But yeah, they used to like the one hotel in Australia. They would walk around the hotel, which they could, it was, and shouting, you know, fascists and whatever you know, remarks. And the last guy, we opened the sliding door, pulled him in. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't be saying this, but yeah, I don't think he ever joined those protests again. Eh? Mm -mm. And uh, you know, he got what was coming to him. Yeah. Um, you know, they would follow you on motorbikes and try and disrupt you wherever you were going to parties or after match functions. Um, it was it was frightening at times. And, you know, Anne, my wife, was pregnant with our first, and that's why I sort of had a nervous breakdown in Cardiff. Oh, did you? Yeah. I didn't know that. Mm. Shame. So they put me on Valium, and then I used to fly. <laughs> What's that? You said just point at you when you want some music, so I'm just <laughs> pointing at you. <laughs> so you want music? Yes, please. <laughs> Say it. Eiffel 65, blue. We've had a couple of tweets about uh, music, and somebody's saying, who was it that said, oh, taste brits. Donkey taste. Wow, some serious old school music on today. Well, let me tell you that my choices are not being played <laughs> by Simon because he said... And they never will be again. <laughs> my, <laughs> my choices... There was he said, mass are not suicide good. the last time we played, what is it, Whitney Houston? What is wrong with Barbara Whitney Houston? Barbara Streisand? And Sydney Sh likes Barbara Streisand. Oh. And I like the Bee Gees. Yeah, the Bee Gees are okay. Oh. Well, there's, yeah, there's that duet yeah. between Barbara Streisand and Gibb. Right? Yeah. That That's quite new and, and okay. No, I can't believe we're Listen. sitting here trying to talk sport on a sporting program and we're having to talk music. Well, we don't have that many listeners. We want to hang on to the ones we got. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, I want to you know, but Bee Gees, I love them. Man. Okay, we'll play some Bee Gees for you. I'll, sports I'll drop. compromise, that's fine. That's nice. Cliff Becker. Uh, Hester Gunther. That's a that's a Tom Jones song, Hester. Oh, I'm going to put you out of your misery. In 1996, J.T. James T. Small scored 13 tries in 1996. That I think was the first year of Super Rugby. 
They, um, they had it earlier, 1993, the Transvaal side won it under the lead. That was Super 10. But James Small in 1996 scored oh, that was a wonderful year 13 for tries. Yeah. No, but he was playing for the Sharks then. He started off, yeah, he went to Greenside. Oh, he went to yeah. Greenside High. We, do you remember we, ah, that was another guy I said to you would become a Springbok. Yep. But we that Because our sons yeah. were playing for Sandown High. Yes. And uh, James yeah. T. Small was playing for Greenside. Um, and, you know, he could play. I mean, he was fast. He was big. My son always told uh, quite a, a funny story against himself when he ran at the Inter High mm. in the 400 meters. And at RAU, and he was now Joburg uh, UJ, and my son was in the outside lane, <laughs> and he said, when he ran around the first hundred meters, James Small was in the inside lane, <laughs> overtook him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know he was quick, he was strong, big yeah, boy. He was. Mm, mm. And you know what? You know, when he he marked uh, uh, John Olomu in. Um, uh, that John Olomu never scored a try. Against South Africa. Did you know that, Blades? Who didn't? Jonah Lomu. 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 Didn't ever score a try against mm -hmm. South Africa. No. I know. He didn't. It mm -hmm. was a quite remarkable record. Yeah. And Rowan Richards, sporting a Jeppy badge, says Carlos Spencer is also going to try his hand at boxing. Mm. Maybe Suarez should too. Suarez. 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 Oh. Luis Suarez. Luis Suarez. Oh, Luis Suarez. Did you Liverpool. Liverpool. Yeah. Gosh, he bit. Who did he, he bit? Somebody. Yes. Who? He. Uh, one of the Chelsea players. Yeah, let me find it for you. Are yeah, you kidding? He, he actually bit him. He's Rowan Ritchie. Yeah, Rowan. R I wonder if that's the uh, Gerald Ritchie the relation, because Gerald also played for. Well, he was a Jeppy and played for Jeppy Old Boys and for Transvaal. Gerald Ritchie. What a. Gerald Ritchie. Like you're talking cricket. Now. Yes. Yes. Branislav Ivanovic. Yeah. That's who he bit. Suarez dubbed the oh, the Yeah, look, he bit, he bit him. <laughs> <laughs> don't laugh, Sid. No, no, no that, don't laugh. That is quite funny. That's a beautiful picture. Hey, yeah, I mean. Cannibal. <laughs> apparently, <laughs> apparently, after all this was said and done, 10 minutes later, Evander Holyfield started following Suarez on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> oh, wonderful. You yeah. know, Blaze, you asked me what I've written here, yeah, and I was just reading in the paper yesterday, the Sunday Times, that, you know, scrum halves have got to be clever. And I just thought I'd bring this up. And, when I, you know, you, you're talking about my, the old days when I played, and I played against the greatest. His name was Gareth Edwards. Yeah. And he was brilliant. He was so clever. And why was he clever? He used to, before he passed the ball or kicked the ball, I, I, I noticed that he would survey the whole ground and he would look up. Scan. Button, scan, yeah. better word. And he would check everything that's going on on that field. And he, that's why he was clever and he was brilliant. And this is what they say, Francois Hochard. You know, I think he said he's got to be a clever scrum off. Yeah. It's so important that. Uh, yeah. I, uh, I'm going to give you, a doubt. Gareth Edwards was the, the rugby player of the millennium. millennium yeah. And I've said to you, but at the risk of repetition, I've said that I don't really uh, like rugby player of the, of the game even. You know, because it's, there's man so many the different... Yeah, man of the match. MVP, because there's so many different positions. In American football, how many times doesn't the quarterback win the MVP in the Super Bowl final? Because he's the guy controlling the game, and and mm. normally the winning team quarterback gets the MVP. And so, I uh, you know I'm not uh, I'm not really crazy about uh, the man of the match. The man of the match the other day was Vili Larue for the cheaters. Now there's a guy who you know when he gets the ball, Vili Larue is playing with a free spirit, and he says. He's been given the, the license by yes. his coaches to pop up at fly half and pop up at wheel. Do your wing. own thing. Love it. Do his own thing. And, uh, and there he is. But, of course, the, the, the canners, I saw a little a noom. The canners can't uh, reckon that uh, Heineken may won't p pick him because he's not big enough. Okay, you what know, else have you got? I, you know, I just, you know, again, I'm going to say I admire your Please knowledge of the game. see you've done your homework. Hey? No, but now just a few questions I'd like to ask you, and I'm sure that people out there would also appreciate it, and that is, um, you know, the Kings, can they, can they win a game, another game, what you saw on Saturday? 
I think they're going to battle to to win another game, but I mean the Kings have done far better than everybody expected. Unbelievable. I mean they've tackled, but you you know, as I think it was Nas Buerta said to me when we were on this, this trip to Valcom said that you know you can't tackle all season. And at the end of the day, what was the result with the Bulls? Thirty four nil was it? Thirty four nil. 34 no. Am I right? You know, Some I mean, no. you, at the end of the day, you, you one's got to look at it and say, if we if you lost a game 34 nil, you've been th you yeah, just a bit of a hiding. Mm. No, definitely. Although the Bulls only scored those last 14 points right near the end of the game, but it, which again shows you that you know you can't tackle for 80 minutes. I think one stat we saw come up was that the Kings had made uh, over a hundred tackles. And the Bulls had made 47 or something, and it's just uh, I impossible. Okay. If you missed it, J.T. Small, James Small scored 13 tries in the 1976 season. And uh, only one guy tweeted us with the correct answer. I forget who it was. Oh, Dirk gosh. Was Dirk Snookhenkemans. No, Dirk Snookhenkemans. Yeah, yeah. Well done, Dirk. And Lazy, uh, but you've got to give, uh, what's his name, 10 out of 10, eh? I love, you know, no one likes him, and I'm talking Chicky Watson, what he's done for ru for rugby in general. I mean, you know, you look Well, rugby in the Cape, in the Eastern Cape area, I mean, I think the fact that wow. there were 45 plus people, thousand, thousand at the gra ground was, I mean, fantastic, it, really fantastic mm. uh, for them. They don't get as many people for the local derbies. You know what is amazing is that the, the number of spectators they get for a, are you a Stormers fan? <laughs> Am I a Stormers fan? That means no. That means yes. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Ruiz and all. all <laughs> Am I a Stormers fan? What a question. Yeah. Yeah, I'm are you the voice of South African rugby? <laughs> <laughs> what a question. <laughs> what a question. <laughs> <laughs> I just came back to the Kings. They yeah. beat the Sharks in the Vodacom Cup. You know that. This yes. Weekend. Did they? Yeah. No, they didn't. East, yeah, EP Kings. Did they? EP Kings. Because EP Kings, when I, I went to bed, I was watching that game on Saturday they night. beat Sharks 15 in the oh, Vodacom. Did they? Because mm. the Sharks were in the lead to start with. Yes, and they came and back from the came, behind. the EP yeah. Kings mm. came back. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, no, they have. You know, they've, they've done very well and take your hat off. To, and EP, they used, used to say that club rugby in the EP was the toughest and roughest and well, quite frankly, dispatch. dirtiest. Mm. Uh, in, I mean, Mickey Gerber, back, in, you know, he came to Joburg in about 1958, said that club rugby in the eastern province was really, really tough. I mean, the, and the guys used to box, eh? Mm. <laughs> and <laughs> and the biggest culprits were uh, Donnie Gerber played for them. No, 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 dispatch. no. That no. was before no, dispatch. It was for? Mickey played for Olympics. Okay. Blues, they called them. Mm. And, and uh, the games were between Blues and, and Crusaders. Where Hambly Parker played for Crusaders. Pippi yeah. Kaufman played for Pippi yeah. Crusaders. Mm. And uh, they say that those games, that, well, I think it was later that Dispatch came, you know, became a, a very uh, a strong side Dominant, where they won yeah. the. Won the <laughs> Donnie Gerber has been with us. So Donnie Gerber says to us, you know, but they called him rather unkindly Domkrach. Uh, uh, oh, Francie really? Rasmus. <laughs> oh, right. So yeah. Francie Rasmus was the captain of the of the dispatch team, and just before kickoff, he called the guys together, and they were playing a, a major game, and he called the guys together. It might have even been a provincial game, he, and he was a, he was a mechanic. He had a garage. That did Francie Rasmus? You must listen mm. to this, Sam. I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, did Francis Rasmus calls them together. He says, "Boys, boys, 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 come, 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 come." It would be a bit yellow prat, and the, all the guys are really serious. They okay. He says, "Tell me, has anybody got a, D, a gearbox <laughs> for a 1985 <laughs> this dis, Nissan Bucky? <laughs> That's exactly. Who's got a gearbox for a 1985 <laughs> 1600 Nissan Bucky?" <laughs> <laughs> that was um, his team talk. I, I <laughs> once played in, I played, Harvey Carlson was the captain of a, an invitation side. And I, th I think I was playing for the SA Barbarians mm. down in, in Port Elizabeth. And Harvey Carlson said, guys, we've got to tackle, 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 because they, they've got Eben Ulefier and they've got, you know, Gertz Muller and a whole lot of good players. 
And they did. They had a hell of a side. Uh, you, you remember Johan van der Merwe went on yeah, tour with time. you, played centre for Eastern Province. Mm, mm. And at half time they were leading and they sort of cut us to ribbons a little bit, but not by much. And Javi Carlos had called us together. He said, boys, boys, come here, come here, come here. And now we're expecting a great tactical speech on the whole thing. He looked around, he said, <laughs> In other words, I told you, alas, <laughs> quirk you know, Nothing about tactics, just, <laughs> I love it, Dad. Yeah. Oh, Blaze, good old memories, eh? Now, your first, um, your wasn't your first test in France, huh? 67. Dirty. Right? Well, it's the first time Rough, I've seen, it? no, the Not French, dirty. yeah, they, they were, but that's where Fruc de Prea hit Plantifol. Oh, I don't know he? if you can re recall that. I remember Lane Plantifol. Yeah. And he, he was, was about six foot ten, wasn't he? Two comma zero seven meters. He was plentiful, plentiful. Was. and he was crying in the changing room after the game. Oh, was well, he? Frick hit him. I mean, I I, yeah, he, yeah, his yeah. eye was out here. Yeah. And uh, we drew that 6 all. Yeah. Your first, first test? My first test, we drew 6 all. Are you serious? And then, of, well, of the 25, I, and you know this, you told me, I think we drew 5 tests. Of the 25? Mm. It was quite a lot, huh? 20, oh, 4, 4, lost 4, drew 4, won the rest. Huh. Yeah. That was, uh, I mean, it's, it's strange. I remember John Robbie also sort of making the, the point that, you know, the, the, the when we's, the when we's okay. always used to say, we ran the ball and we did this <laughs> and we did that and we did the next <laughs> thing. And then you look at the scores, three all. 6-3, 3 no. They running a ball all over the place. I remember, you know, they, I mean, you used to play. They've got, I mean, they've got better drainage or something because the, the field in 1960-61, Carter Farms Park was about four foot underwater. And they played the next day. And, I mean, it was just like a mud bath. And oh. was just like an all-in wrestling match. That was my experience there. I mean, I'll show you. Video you played in a mud bath. Total that was six you did, three. You didn't no, know three all. You no, scored a try. I scored a try. Three all. Gareth scored right. At Gareth the end. scored. It was six all. Six so all. A try was three points in those yes. days. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and for faith. When Sydney yeah. went to school, history lessons were short. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I love it, mate. And I want okay, Blake. Question time again. Who's going to win? I don't know, because uh, uh, I'm the uh, worst predictor 50. in the world. Who do you I think? am the worst predictor oh, in the world. Oh, but it's so difficult. It, it really is, is unbelievably tough. difficult. What you did were I talking say here? about, uh, what, again? Now here, Bulls, uh. they're great, they are back. And what did I say yeah, here? To win. In it to win it, the Bulls. That's me. Wow. That's a I want to know from both of you half. how you think the Stormers and the Sharks are going to fare on the road. It's a tough one for the Sharks. Sharks, definitely. Very tough Stormers. No, the Sharks, are where we started saying, you know, you, you play a game on Saturday, Kutsia gets injured, then the Beast gets injured. The poor guy who's trying to organize the, and does the logistics of passports and, and, you know, a whole other thing. I mean, they, I suppose they it's get the nightmare. whole squad, they get the whole squad visas. I remember us as television people, Kurbis Visa and Russell Belter, getting stopped at the airport because we didn't have work permits. Hmm. First time I'd ever heard of it. First and only ever time. I'd, I mean, I've been to New Zealand what? about five times. And in New Zealand? Was that New Zealand? In Otago. In, wow. uh, in Dunedin. They stopped us and said, where are your work permits? Because we had, you know, all this television equipment and I was carrying a tripod or, a, or something light. Mm. And uh, they, they stopped us. Gareth Edwards told us the story. You know, he scored that famous try. I'm going to give you a bit of commentary. And uh, this is the first. This is the first. This is the first. Well, it, it's not really commentary, this but this is the fourteenth with me. <laughs> he tells the story about uh, how he scored a famous try in 1973 against the All Blacks at Cardiff Arms Park for the British for Barbarians, yes, and it had been started by the Welsh fly half Phil Bennett. And in 1974, the British Lions side was picked, and Willie John McBride, who had played in that Barbarians team, not as captain, John Dawes was the captain, had a one-on-one -on -one with all the players, and he was having a one-on-one -on -one with Phil Bennett. And he said, Phil, do you remember last year when 
Brian Williams kicked the ball downfield and you picked it up under the crossbar and we all stood around waiting for you to kick to touch so that we might have a little bit of a respite. <laughs> He said, uh, I remember, he said, instead you dance past Sconza, you dance past Ian Kirkpatrick, he gave the ball to John Pullen, who gave it to J.P.R. Williams, who gave it to John Dawes, three passes inside our 122. Do you remember that? He said, I remember, I remember. He said, Dawes threw a beautiful dummy and ran it outside the 22 and over the halfway line and gave it right to Tommy David. Do you remember that? He said, I remember. He said, that's great. And Tommy David ran it over the halfway line and then slung it left to Derek Cornell. Derek Cornell caught the ball on his bootlaces, looking for Richards on the outside, popped the ball up in the air, and Gareth Edwards pouched the ball out and sprinted those 40 meters and dived over in the corner just ahead of Grant Batty's tackle. Do you remember that? He said, I remember, I remember. He said, I'm pleased you remember, my boy, because we'll have none of that sort of crap on this tour. <laughs> 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 Unbelievable! <laughs> <laughs> well done, Blade. Hey. hey! All right, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for your tweets. Thanks to Th my great mate, Silly, Silly, Silly. Pleasure, love it. And Sydney Harold Namus. Thanks, Cheers, Blades. guys. Have a wonderful week. Cheers. That was the Blades on Ball Show. Join the voice of South African rugby on your wireless next Monday for more unbelievable memories and banter. Until then, stay classy, like 20-year-old Glenn Morangi classy.